We're going to look at how to read chess notation. We have here a game that was played a couple of years ago. And we see the notation written on the right hand side of the screen. The board needs to have coordinates to help you see these. If you look across the bottom of the board now, there you see the letters A through H across the left bottom side, and then up the left side you see the numbers 1 through 8. Every square on the chessboard has a name. This square right here in the middle of the board where the cursor is, is named D4. It's on the D file. It's on the fourth rank. Now, what's the name of this square? F5 is correct. The square? B5. The white rook stands on H1. When you're writing chess notation, a pawn move simply names the square the pawn moves to. Any other piece, you put the name of the piece using a capital letter, followed by the square it moves to. There will be a few more nuances to look at as we go on. So if we look at the game score here, the first move is E3. White moves a pawn to E3. Black replies with D5. A pawn moves to D5. Then white's next move is F4, another pawn move. White repli black replies with E6, another pawn move. White now brings out a knight. We use an N for the knight because even though the word knight starts with a K, so does the word king. The king gets the K, and the knight uses the sound of the beginning of the word, the N, for knight. Knight F3. Black replies with a pawn move, c5. Another pawn move by white, b3. And then black brings on a knight, knight c6. White pins that knight with bishop to b5. Black then brings on a knight, f6. White plays bishop to b2. Black, bishop to d7. See how this is very simple. Now we see some funny notation. Two zeros. What does that mean? That means castling kingside. White moves the king two squares, and the rook jumps over. Black then decides to attack the castle king by throwing the h-pawn forward. Another white pawn move, d3, and the black pawn continues, h4. Now we see a slightly different notation. N, B, D2. What does that mean? Well, the square d2 is right here in front of the queen. Notice that white has two knights. This knight that's on f3, and this knight that's on b1. Both of those knights could move to d2. The notation tells us it's the knight on the b file. Knight on b moves to d2. Black plays queen b6. And now we see the first capture of the game. Bishop x c6. That means the bishop captures on the c6 square. Black replies with, by capturing the bishop. Then white moves knight e5. Black plays bishop d6. White plays a4. <coughs> Excuse me. Queen c7. Queen a2. Knight h5. And now, rook A, D1. Both rooks can move to D1. Black, white chooses to move the rook that's on the A file. Now we see three zeros. Notice that black could castle either direction. If it were two zeros, on, as on white's seventh move, that would be castling kingside. But three zeros, or see their capital O's, means castling queenside. Again, the king moves two, and the rook pops over. Knight takes c6, queen takes c6, knight f3, rook d, g8, knight e5, queen e8, c4. And now the most exciting part of this game, black offers a knight, knight g3. The pawn captures, so it's h, x, g3, meaning the pawn on the h file captures on g3. Black 
recaptures with the pawn. And here, white makes his critical mistake. He should play knight to g4, but he did not. He played rook to f3. His idea is to capture this pawn that's on g3. Unfortunately, he needs to guard the h2 and h1 squares, and he fails to do this. Black now wins with a forced checkmate. Rook to h1 check. There's only one legal move to capture the rook. Rook to h8. One legal move for white, moving back to g1. Rook to h1 check. One legal move is to take the rook. The queen comes over with check. The king must move to g1. Queen comes down to h2 with check. The king has one legal square. And queen to h1. Notice the pluses indicate that it is check, and the pound symbol indicates checkmate. 